If you're someone who's clicked on this video because you've seen the title of the video and you disagree with it and you're ready to laugh at a silly SJW on the internet who you think is wrong, uh, then I would really appreciate it if you would hang on a moment and hear me out on what I want to say and then after you've watched it, if you disagree, that's fine. I'm not forcing anyone to think anything. But firstly, to get a couple things out of the way, if anybody wants to come at me with the whole facts don't care about your feelings thing, God help me. If the facts that you're talking about are biological sex, that's not what I'm talking about, so maybe save it. My biological sex is female, I don't really care, my gender identity is male. My gender is separate from my biological sex, and if you disagree that the two things are separate, then we're definitely not going to agree on what follows. But as a living, breathing example of somebody whose gender identity does differ from the one that they were assigned at birth, uh, I'm inclined to believe that the two things are separate. In my personal opinion, gender is based on a feeling, and feelings aren't lies, they are real and we all have them, and I will expand on that because that is a bit vague right now. Feelings and opinions are two different things as well. An opinion can change and a feeling can't. By change, I meant change voluntarily. Obviously, a feeling can change. I'm not talking about having the opinion that my gender identity is male, although that is my opinion. I'm talking about the more visceral, physical feeling of being male, in my case. So let's expand on that. If we're talking feelings, and I'm going to use this metaphor a lot, so bear with me on it, but it, I think it's helpful. It's helped me organize my, uh, my thoughts on it a lot. A sad person can wear a happy face for so long that they can convince themselves up until the point that they are happy. But eventually that sadness will rise to the surface because as much as a feeling is a concept in the brain and something that we can't see, unlike whatever's on the outside, which we can see, it's still very much real. And even though it's a feeling, it affects us a great deal too. And gender works this way too, in my opinion, because it's also a feeling. I can't feign femaleness or pretend to be female when I know that I feel male because it's always going to come to the surface because that is my true feeling and it's not something I can change. Because it's also important to note here that having a feeling and deciding on a whim or at will or choosing whatever, um, they're also completely different things. Because you can't choose what you feel, you can't help having a feeling. If I'm sad, I can't force happiness. So I'm not talking about being able to decide whatever gender you are, we're still very much talking about something that is ingrained and uncontrollable. And going back to the metaphor, I wouldn't be able to truly describe what happiness or sadness feel like. I might say, well, happiness is like a warm, fuzzy feeling, or sadness is like a sinking feeling, but everybody experiences those feelings differently anyway. We can find ways to get close to a description that will just about satisfy everybody, but even then, if I had to describe feelings of happiness or sadness to an alien who's experienced neither, I'm never going to be able to do it in a, in a way that is accurate enough that will fully recreate that feeling for them. However, just because I can't put a description to it doesn't mean that we decide it doesn't exist, because we know it does and no one's disputing the existence of feeling happy or sad. So, similarly, I can't put a description to the maleness that I feel, I just feel male. And people ask, oh, how come you can't define what it is to be male or to be female without the use of stereotypes or gender roles or all of that? And I think that feelings are just incredibly hard things to describe. I can say, well, I feel more comfortable being called he and wearing typically masculine clothing and this, that, dysphoria, whatever, I can try to get medical, but again, everybody experiences it differently anyway. And even then, my description will not be satisfying enough for a lot of people. But it doesn't mean that I'm not feeling what I'm feeling. It's just hard to describe to somebody else, but nonetheless, it is real. And that's also why we say that gender is a spectrum with infinite possibilities, and people get taken aback by that, like, infinite genders? Like, what madness? You stupid? Well, we're not literally saying, hey, here's a list of every single gender, including bicycles, helicopters, and other modes of transport. The point is that there is no limit to the degree to which you can feel a thing, and it varies from person to person as well. It's just up to you to figure out what you want to call it or name it in relation to the furthest ends of the spectrum. I feel totally male, and that's it for me, and some people feel female, and some people feel neither. And it's particularly when they start feeling neither that they start putting various names to it. And that bothers some people because they feel like it's too complicated, or people are going too far because they're coming up with wacky names and I don't like it. But it's nothing crazy or made up. I mean, I've seen some made up names, but... As far as I'm concerned, call it whatever you want. Non-binary is like the standard one. That or any other name that pops up, I don't really care. What I'm getting at is the reason that people come up with so many different names to describe their gender is because people are trying to find the one which best describes their feelings. And of course, there are so many feelings that can possibly be felt by a large group of people. A near infinite number of possibilities, if you will. We have ideas of what it is to seem or feel male or female, and most people feel comfortable with the role that they're given, but some people just don't, and it's all about how you feel. And that's not a bad thing. Facts don't care about my feelings, but my feelings are facts because they're there and I feel them. Just because you can't see it or verify it with some infallible scientific method to be able to point at it and go, yes, that's a real thing because I can see it right there. Even though we can't see each other's feelings, we all 
are aware of the existence of feelings due to experience, experiencing them ourselves and being on the general plane of agreement of, yeah, we, we all feel that. We all feel something. I mean, facts don't care about your opinions, it's far less catchy, but it's a lot more accurate. An opinion has no bearing on what the facts are, but a feeling is a much more concrete thing. It is a fact, and the fact is I feel male, and it's why I live as male, and it would be completely impractical for me to live as a woman, on an emotional level, and for my mental health, and my comfort level, and whatever else. So that, as far as I'm concerned, overrides everything else. Point is, to summarize, I think that gender is something that is felt, but that doesn't make it any less concrete or valid. I know that even a lot of trans people disagree on that topic, so I think that's kind of the reason why I wanted to, like, sort out my thoughts on it. It's particularly the people who are a lot more medically inclined uh, in the trans community who would be quite upset at people who would um, go anywhere near implying that gender is anything to do with feelings. But I think it is, but that doesn't mean that it's a chosen feeling, because I don't think that you can choose a feeling. I think that sentence has probably just summarised what I was trying to say better than anything else. If you disagree and you think I'm dumb and, um, you know, I should get off the internet, then fine. I'm... It's hardly a groundbreaking issue, but it's something that I wanted to, uh, I wanted to talk about for a little bit. Bye.